Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about CTC and railroad signals, and specifically how dispatchers are able to coordinate train movements and traffic flow throughout a railroad. We're back at Tim Dickinson's incredible BN layout, and he's faithfully recreated a USNS type CTC machine with operating switches, signals, and track detection. So we're going to use this layout to really showcase CTC and hopefully teach you a little bit about it. Now in CTC, or Centralized Traffic Control, a dispatcher has three main tools to coordinate train movements. The first is the ability to tell where the trains are with track occupancy. The second is the ability to control the signals and tell the engineers when to go and when to stop. And the last is the ability to control the switches to tell the trains which tracks they're going to take. And we'll take a look at the first two now. Before we head over to the dispatcher's panel, I wanted to look at how a railroad is laid out so that CTC can actually work. And it's usually divided into blocks or sections of track, and then trains have permission into and in between those sections of track. Typically, where there's switches, it's called a control point. And there's also signals guarding the control point, telling trains whether they can enter it and proceed through it. So here you can see is pretty typical of what a dispatcher might see. And then the light pink uh, dots indicate whether a train is on that block. So you can see proceeding through the control point on the main line, the uh, indicator light will come on on the main track on the top of the screen as the train enters it. You can also see that there's the tail end of a train on the siding to the left, and that's indicated on the dispatcher's panel as well. It's just a, a schematic, and we'll see that in the board here, but I just want to show you how that correlates to the railroad in real life, and Tim has done a great job at recreating a section of a track, which is shown on the dispatcher's panel. So this is the control point of Summit. There's a crossover here, and take a look for it when we head over to the dispatcher's panel. The third and final tool that a dispatcher has is the ability to control a switch. In a USNS type CTC machine, it's known as normal and reversed. It's normal if it's lined for the main line, or you can see the switch points throw here to the siding, in which case it's known as reverse. If a switch is lined for anything other than straight, whether it's a yard, a siding, or even a different main track, it's known as being reversed. So with a little bit of information about CTC and how railroad is laid out, Welcome to the dispatcher's panel. This is what a dispatcher might see, and rather than tell you about it myself, I wanted to let an expert do it. So meet Barry Draper. He's gonna tell us a little bit about this machine, and he has a wealth of knowledge about CTC and lots of experience operating USNS type machines. So I just wanted to say thank you to Barry, and for the next few minutes, enjoy a little bit of firsthand knowledge about USNS type CTC machines. The entire main line is under control of the dispatcher from this machine. It's a replica of a US and S CTC machine uh, as would have been still in use in 1976. Now basically, you've got a model board up here shows you where the trains are, and then the levers down here that control signals and switches. We've got a train up here at Summit in the siding, the north siding. So if I want to line him up to go down to Fruitvale, I would reverse this switch here, 17A, put that over to reverse, push the button, the switch rolls over, then you push that little lever over there, and that clears the signal out in the field. So this train now has a lineup to go as far as Fruitvale. Beyond Fruitvale, right now, well, the switch is reversed at Fruitvale. So if I want to put him in the siding at Fruitvale, all I actually have to do is put that lever over to the right hand the green light comes on, and there's now a signal there at Fruitvale that will take him into the siding. microphone comes down here and normally I would have a headset on just because it's hard to hear with all the noise of the trains being that we're actually in the layout and not in a separate room. Uh, it would be a speaker in a real installation and I have a foot pedal down here on the floor. This is my foot pedal and that allows me to activate the transmitter. And during operating sessions, all of the engineers have an FRS radio with a headset. 
they're wearing that. They can, of course, communicate between each other, but that's primarily to communicate with the dispatcher. So when a train is ready to leave um, Elliott Yard, Elliott Yard really isn't on the model board because it's not in CTC. It's a yard. And so there are two ways to get out of Elliott Yard here, but neither one of those are actually signaled switches. So I don't line a train out of Elliott Yard. Rather, the train calls me on a radio and says, we're ready to go east from Elliott Yard. And I tell them, you have permission to enter the main track through the 10th Avenue crossover and proceed east on signal indication. And of course, then I would give them a signal indication to proceed east. And But they would be doing that. that that's the way we do it in all operations. Leaving the main track, they don't really have to call me and get permission, but um, they usually will call me and tell me when they're in the clear, so I know they've got the main track back. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning just a little bit about USNS type CTC machines. Eventually, as technology advanced, they were replaced by more modern computers in which a dispatcher just looks at a screen, is able to point on the schematic of the layout to throw the switches and line the signals. But this is just a fun look into a previous era and how the signals in CTC ran. So thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.